everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Jude Dry, and I'm your host for today's Half Hour with Bottoms. And I'm very thrilled to have the writer-director extraordinaire, Emma Seligman, with us today. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for doing this. Yeah, my pleasure. It's always fun to talk to you about um, your work because it's so much fun and you're so thoughtful and uh, and funny about it. So I'm I'm thrilled that we get to dig in. Me too. Thank you. Um, would you like to give the kind people out there a quick overview of the film? Sure. Um, Bottoms is about two um, high schoolers, uh, two losers who start a fight club um, so they can uh, impress and hook up with cheerleaders. Um, it's a gay sex comedy action movie. <laughs> we love all, all the words, all the buzzwords. <laughs> yes. Um, all right, so in case people haven't seen the film, um, we're gonna show a quick trailer. Could the ugly, untalented gays please report to the principal's office? Guess that's you guys. Tonight is our night. We're getting the cooch. I'm gonna talk to Brittany. You could say hi to Isabel. What would I say? Hey girl, how's your boyfriend? How's his penis? Mira, Mira, on the wall. Who's I'm gonna expel you both for committing a crime against oh, Jeff. Get out of the car. You can't tell me what to do. We're just practicing for a self-defense club. It's like, like a fight club? Yes. Just stay in your lane until you're munching Beaver at Wesleyan. Yes, sir. What's your plan here? Jeff is psychotic, and they're picking on the weak and defenseless. So we teach a bunch of girls how to defend themselves. They are grateful to us. Adrenaline is flowing. Next thing you know, Isabel and Brittany are kissing us on the mouth. <laughs> You can be our club advisor. You know, my mom did say I need to pick up a hobby. Welcome to our fucking fight club. Let's get it popping in this motherfucker. Bitch, I need a day -day. Make a move it up and down. Yes, we play! I want that trophy. safe space like this, it means a lot to people. I'm gonna finally reverse stalk my stalker. Yeah! I'll be able to kill my stepdad. Awesome! Okay. He seems so supportive of women, especially the hot ones. Men need therapy. Are you cheating on me? No! I literally saw you yesterday. So nerd, I fucked your mom! We are literally at the bottom. We have nowhere to go but up. Your club is over. They deserve a shot at showing everybody how fucking cool they are. Let's go fuck up some football players. I want that. I want that. I want that trophy. You created a fight club to get some coochie. Yeah, they ain't know how to work that thing. I know y'all ain't tickling the pearl. I just don't know if you should. You're supposed to be talking to us like that, just like as a teacher. A lot of people love this movie for many reasons, but um, particularly queer audiences, I think felt very seen by it. And uh, I, a lot of the sentiment I heard was like, we finally get, you know, the slutty teen sex comedy of our <laughs> dreams. Like, oh, you know I, know, I know people my age were like, if this had come out when I was a teenager, like how different my life would have been. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I guess, do, do you make work for sort of like the your teenage self or... Was that part of part of what was fun here? Yeah, I think the goal was to try to make something that I wish I could have seen in high school. I think that now in retrospect, Io um, Adebri, who plays Josie, said something at South By where she said that if this came out in high school, it would have helped her, but also might have hurt her <laughs> or might have scared her. So I look back and I'm like, I actually don't know how much, like what if I was ready for a movie like this yet, but um. Yeah, I think I I definitely um, made this like with the inspiration of of my high school self for sure. Um, is this how personal is the story, or or where where is it personal? Not really at all, other than that these these kids are um, selfish and and flawed in the way that all high schoolers are and horny, or at least you know think talking about sex makes them cool um, and uh you know have a lot of angst in them um and are also dealing with the beginnings of womanhood um and you know just general feelings i think that i had a lot of angst that i that i wish i could have 
taken out or, or had a, a sort of outlet for um, uh, other than like being a movie nerd or whatever. Um, and so I think that that maybe comes from there. My first movie was so personal. So I felt like this one was more escapist for me. Mm, yeah. I mean, that makes perfect sense that you would gravitate towards something less personal. Um, uh, I mean, the fight scenes are obviously so much fun and, and a big integral part of the film. What What was filming those like? And you know, what was like the training, like in the fight choreography? I'm always curious about that stuff. It was so much fun. I mean, we didn't have a fight choreographer. So my my cinematographer, Maria Rishi, and I choreographed um, everything and then worked with our wonderful stunt coordinator, um, Devin McNair, to achieve everything. Um, but it was great because it, it it stretched, you know, a part of my filmmaking brain and like got me to flex a muscle I'd never sort of had before and we watched so many references um particularly from like Edgar Wright movies because we wanted the fighting to look stylistic and cool but also silly um and funny and we wanted them the girls to be not great at it because they don't know what they're doing but also kind of look badass um so it was fun to sort of craft that and then the actors were so good and 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 you know did like a couple weeks of training and we really wanted choreography that the actors could do um that we didn't have to use stunt doubles for I think we used a double um twice um in in for Hazel um in that in one I won't give it away but in one sequence um yeah and I know I mean <clears throat> I know you had some pushback like in the development stages around the fight like you talked about that a bit at P-Town. Um, people were like, it's not real fighting, right? And yeah, I, I, you know, I, yeah, I didn't get pushback in terms of like, oh, we can't see women fighting on screen or anything, but pushback in terms of like the level of detail and care and time and, and money it took to sort of achieve those. Like I wanted to prioritize prep for those and people were like in the production side, like, oh, but it's not actually real fighting, right? Like, it's just going to, I don't know what the alternative would have been, but um, we had our, our stunt sequences written out in detail in the script um, uh, to the point of like writing out each move. Um, so yeah, it, 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 people didn't understand we actually wanted it to look real um, and that that would take time to achieve, um, you know, but we got there <laughs> in the yeah. end. <laughs> I mean, it looks very real to me. It's, Thank you. <laughs> plays as, as real. Um, and yeah, I wanted to get, oh, I mean, you mentioned some of your influences because I love how varied your influences were for this film. I think maybe the folks might be a little surprised at like the breadth of your influences. So I, could you just talk about that? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I think like emotionally and inspirationally, like I wanted to go back to the Y2K teen movies that I grew up on, like uh, particularly sort of this moment of very campy female driven um, uh, genre of, of movies where the, the high school girls are doing bad things. And, um, you know, it's very campy, like Sugar and Spice or Jawbreakers or Drop Dead Gorgeous or, um, you know, even Mean Girls, you know, which came later, but but like Bring It On, like uh, there was just so many in that time um, that that all came from, I feel like the Heathers effect 10 years earlier um, or 20. Um, but I think that when we were getting into the production and costume design, I wanted the movie to feel timeless. Um, and so we started looking at teen movies from every decade, you know, since the beginning of these stereotypes that we have in the movie, like the jock and the cheerleader and the nerd, um, like going back to Greece and American Graffiti and, and even Cry Baby, like these movies that depict the 50s and 60s um, and, and classic Americana, you know, teen life. Um, and, and that became references, those became references for our color palette and the textures that we wanted. Um, and then we looked for sort of like a John Hughes like high school when we were location scouting with the brick and wooden bleachers. Um, I, I wanted to put our queer characters in decades of teen movies that we, you know, um, ha haven't gotten to exist in. Um, but then also, yeah, like Edgar Wright fight references and kick ass, like the movies that I grew up on sort of what is what inspired me to sort of take like the sex comedy and um, the superhero or like fighting to save the girl movie wanted to combine those two and, and, and give our, our girls a chance to sort of be flawed and horny, but also like heroes. 
Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's so interesting what you say about wanting it to look timeless, because when you say that, it it does really feel feel that way. Thank Is you. that, I'm curious, are you, since, you know, you're a writer and director, or how, how much are you thinking about the visuals, like, at the script pop process? I think in the beginning, like, not really at all, not, not, you know, because I don't want to be, but uh, I think especially writing with Rachel, who's just so free in her style of writing, and um, is really just focusing on the jokes and, and what feels right rhythmically. Um, uh, you know, it's, we're focusing more on sort of getting the humor right. And, and then we're getting into sort of the characters and taking notes on what their motivation is and making sure the structure makes sense. Um, uh, and then I think the visuals start coming to me very slowly, like piece by piece. I think first I had the sort of Scott Pilgrim and um, attack the block and kick ass kind of inspiration of of just wanting this to feel like cool and and action driven, and then I think as we continued like the colors and and sort of more of those old old references like I was talking about like Greece and whatnot came to me, um, and then I think once I started working with my DP, that's when we got more deep into um, you know like our fight references and 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 like Fight Club and even action-driven comedies like Zoolander and, and Anchorman, um, uh, you know, et cetera. I think it just comes piece by piece, uh, but, but it happened more toward the end of the writing process. Mm, so interesting. Um, yeah, without, without going into spoilers, there's a, there's a big scene at the end with, that involves a lot of um, blocking and, you know, set pieces, I guess, and um, also a bit of, a bit of violence. Um, I guess, how did you, yeah, how did you know you, at what point in the writing process were you like, oh, we really have to go there at the end and just go big or go home kind of? Yeah, that ending came pretty late in the writing process. We had an ending originally that given the sort of level of, of you know, uh, violence and action that's in the movie prior to the end, we sort of had more of a, it was a set piece, but the, what the ending actually was, um, was, was quite anticlimactic, um, in terms of them achieving their goal to kind of save the day, but, um, uh, not in a epic way. And then Rachel, at that point, the, the movie was already at Orion and, you know, like people had already bought the script knowing what it was going to be and like given us the budget that we were going to have. And then it was Rachel's idea. And she like, turned on she like put house of the rising sun on her phone and she was like this is it and she just started like acting out what the ending would be with in terms of like the fighting and you know like uh, the physicality of it and then from there we were like oh my god okay we're gonna like end the movie with the action sequence that it deserves um so that came pretty late in the game um you know, and then came the the challenge of actually achieving that <laughs> and telling everyone we were going to get to do that. Um, you know, is that how Rachel writes? She just acts out the whole scene, and then you kind of this. Yeah, I dictate, or she dictates, dictates, whatever. I just like I'm doing my best to kind of like follow along. She's just pitching jokes, pacing around, acting it out. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> I love that. It's like I'm it's like an old school like secretary vibe or something. Yes. That's me. <laughs> you guys, with your like typewriter and your and your cigar. Yes. <laughs> um, all right. I think we have a clip queued up so people can see a bit more. I can't believe they're letting you guys start a fight club. No, they're they're not. We are not. What are you talking about? We're gonna do it. We're doing it. PJ, I wasn't being serious. Josie, did you see the way that Isabel and Brittany were looking at us? Ugh. Also, you heard the announcements. Girls are terrified. It's perfect. They need this. Okay, no, they need like mace, maybe. We can't do that, okay? We'd be misleading them. Guys do that all the time, okay? That's the point of feminism. That's not the point of feminism. You also don't care about feminism. Your favorite show is Entourage. You're missing the point. I don't really think I am. We don't know how to fight. You guys probably fought girls in juvie. No, we were lying about that, obviously. <laughs> about juvie? Yeah, I mean, why what? would you lie to me? You were the one who said we went to juvie. I just didn't correct you. Listen, self defense isn't sexual common sense. You try to punch me in the face, I stop it from happening. Whatever, I don't care. It's easy. Look, this is how we do this. Okay, we start with taekwondo, which I've got covered. And then you guys can move on to air punches. Ha, ba, 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 ba. <sighs> Who do we know? Who do we know? I'll bring Stella Rebecca. You, you know, know Stella, Stella Rebecca? Rebecca? Stella Rebecca who models at car conventions in Chicago on the weekends? Yeah, we're family friends. Okay, great. 
Well, then bring her. Uh, Josie. What? We're doing this. No. Yeah. Listen to me. We teach a bunch of girls how to defend themselves against the evil Huntington killers. They are grateful to us. We build a community. We bond. We share. We connect. We're punching each other. Adrenaline is flowing. Next thing you know, Isabel and Brittany are kissing us on the mouse. Josie, Isabel knew your name. If we do this, uh -huh. very big if, uh -huh. we just run the risk of becoming even bigger losers than we already are right now. And I hate to break it to you, but we're pretty big losers. And that is the beauty. That is the beauty of this mm. because we are literally at the bottom. We're the lowest of the low. Okay. We have nowhere to go but up. Listen, I think this is a good idea, okay? There's a serious lack of female solidarity at this school. Not the point, Hazel. Not the point. Oh my God. I hadn't seen it in a while. It's so funny. <laughs> Just picking up on little things. I love Ao's delivery there. We're we're really not cool. We're seriously. Not cool. <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, in that clip, strikes me also the pacing. It moves so fast. Like, and I think when you're obviously when you're watching it, you're so in it. But just seeing it like isolated in a clip there, I realized like, did was that natural? Did you have to kind of tell them to pick up the pace a bit? It was pretty natural. Um. Uh, but yeah, editing always helps with keeping it up, you know, okay. um, I think, I think it helps sort of rhythmically and, and, and for like the enjoyment of, of the scene, uh, especially when you're like figuring out, you know what I mean? The plot of the movie and you're at the beginning and you're doing the setup, it can just sometimes feel so like these are the stakes and this is what we yeah, need yeah. to do. So sometimes just kind of getting through it is, yeah. is better. I so love like, the throwaway of like, no, we lied about Juvie. It's like, okay, remember that. It's gonna yeah, be yeah, fun. yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Fun little tricks, you know? Yeah. I mean, obviously um, you had such great talent and, you know, they are so talented, but also a big part of directing is casting. It's like some say it's all casting. Well, me, Rachel and I all went to college together and, um, Rachel and I had worked together a bunch of times before, like when they were like 20, like doing sketches at NYU. And I uh, worked with Rachel on the short film. That was my thesis. The, that was the proof of concept that Shiva baby became. Um, and uh, I, I thought I was so funny from what I'd seen from her in stand up. even just meeting her. I thought she was so funny. And um, we started writing bottoms at the end of school, which was six years ago. Um, so I was always supposed to play Josie. That was always the goal. But it was just so funny because she shot the bear literally just a month before we shot Bottoms. I mean, she had already come up and had had small roles and things and, you know, was in writer's rooms for sure. But it's just mm -hmm. now she's who she is and has the the profile that she does. And anyway, it, so that that was always the plan. And then we worked with an amazing casting director, um, Laura Rosenthal and, and Mary Beth Fox, uh, who just really encouraged us to cast people for the rest of the young cast in particular that felt really individual and unique and brought their own sort of singularity that could help create, you know, and help fill out the tapestry of, of the, especially for the fight club, like of this crazy weird world. And I think Rachel and I gravitated toward actors whose comedic performance was grounded in truth and, believing in their characters because we think that that makes the comedy so much funnier if they like fully are committed and and everyone took it very seriously that ended up in the movie um Akaya you know I think originally we also were excited to have a, a cast full of people that were surprising and who either hadn't acted before or were coming from a different world in in that sort of John Waters can't be casting style um so Kaya obviously like, you know, hasn't acted a ton and is most known for being a model and Marshawn, you know, hasn't been in a movie before. And for anyone who doesn't know is, is a retired, um, very, very, you know, successful football player. But yeah, I mean, everyone who is in the movie like blew us away in their tape, like Havana Rose Lou and, and Ruby Cruz and Kaya and Miles, like, um, you know, and Nick they all were so committed, especially like the ones playing the cheerleaders and the football players, like they're playing yeah. these stupid stereotypes and they really need to like be grounded. It was a hard um, balance, you know, for them to, to find that um, we, we got lucky. 
yeah, I feel like in each of those sort of supporting roles, I remember thinking like, they do not need to be like going this hard, but yeah. everyone was, you know? Totally. Yeah. I think once they saw each other doing it, they were like, this is this, this is it. Um, and it is all, it is all in the casting. Yeah. It is. Well, you have a, you have a knack. Yeah. Um, since you mentioned campiness, I'm curious, like how you see this film fitting into like a camp aesthetic. You obviously have, you have like the, the violence and, and the dark humor and, um, you have that element, um, and, and the visuals as well, I guess. So I like, I hadn't heard you talk about camp before in, in relation to the film. Yeah. I mean, I think camp was really our, our main source of inspiration when we first started writing, um, like we wanted this to be as ridiculous and as absurd as possible, um, uh, and I think it became more grounded as time went on, but a wet, hot American summer and, but I'm a cheerleader. And like I said, jawbreakers and, and De drop dead gorgeous, like those campy comedies from the nineties, like really, um, were our source of inspiration in terms of not caring at all about the plot initially, and just totally having fun with these ridiculous characters and being able to have fun while critiquing and 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 then going back to John Waters movies like I think that um especially with the movie being queer like there's a long line of tradition of of these kind of movies and I think that we had to sort of walk the line of still trying to make it a little commercial at which the violence and the action helped uh, us maybe achieve but um you know uh I, I don't know I love campy movies and I miss those movies so much um I do feel like I think it's particularly for like the alt comedy scene which is now becoming a little more mainstream like that Io Rachel Patty Harrison you know um Z-Way like mm -hmm. that these these comedians that came out of like the New York alt comedy scene um are now mainstream and I think they're bringing camp back you know what I mean into the work that they are creating um so I feel like we're sort of part like of a little bit of a new generation of camp um, that's that's driven by queer people and women and people of color like in this time. I love that. The new generation of camp. Yeah. Well, we're going to see probably a lot of them um, at Halloween. Uh, I know people will be watching this later, but it's about to be Halloween and I'm very excited for all the bottoms looks. Have you seen any like teasers yet? Of I have and they look great it's a lot of rugby shirts and and football uniforms and cheerleader uniforms in blood like um I think I I don't think it's it's an I don't know I, I, it's pretty easy costume to <laughs> yeah. to achieve you can um, make it sexy you can make it bloody yeah you just put on whatever you own clothing wise <laughs> and just like give yourself a black eye and, and then that's it um yeah I'm excited to see what people do I hope, I hope you, I hope they send you the photos. Um, <laughs> so you yeah. Um, this is a fun question I, li I like to ask, but what was the hardest thing to shoot and what was the most fun thing to shoot? The most fun thing to shoot was the, there's a, there's a bomb that goes off at some point that was really exhilarating and fun um, and exciting. And I don't know, I felt so much excitement from everyone around me in terms of like the special effects guys. And we had three cameras that night because we could only get it in one go. And the it's, it was, that was really, really fun. Um, I think the hardest thing to shoot, um, oh man, um, it always, unfortunately the answer is so boring because it ended up being the scenes that we didn't think would take that long or that much prep. Like we prepped so much for the big set pieces and the stunt sequences. Um, and then it, it always, it unfortunately ended up being that classroom scene where um, uh, they're, they're doing Treaty of Versailles, they're reenacting Treaty of Versailles in the background while PJ and Josie are like plotting, you know, if they're going to continue this club or not after PJ um, breaks her nose. And um, it, there was just like, there was meant, meant to be mayhem happening in the background, like in all these background jokes, I think calibrating background humor, like humor happening on multiple sort of like focal planes while focusing on the conversation in the foreground, that was way more challenging than I, than I anticipated. Um, so that scene was hard. Um, to figure out because I didn't think it would be hard and then we were like wait they're making so much noise like <laughs> how do we the sound people were just like 
we can't help you. Like, um, so yeah. yeah. No, comedy is hard folks. Comedy <laughs> is, is a skill that deserves recognition as well. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we'll wrap up with, uh, you know, if people are, have been watching this and now they're, they're curious to check out the film if they haven't yet. Um, if someone hasn't had a chance to see Bottoms, is there one thing about the film that stands out for you that would make someone check it out or watch it a second time even? I think I really like watching something escapist where I don't have to think too hard about what it means. And I think that it's it's like, I think dumb, dumb and fun. Like, you know, it's just a, a good time if you want to escape from this world that we're in right now. We need to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hot, hot, dumb and fun. Hot, dumb, and fun. Hot, hot, gay, dumb, and fun. Yeah, pretty good. I mean, thanks. We can all. We should all be so lucky to be described. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much, Emma, and thank you to our friends at Orion Pictures and Amazon MGM Studios, and to Emma Seligman for joining us today, and to everyone watching. Thank you for joining us for half hour with Bottoms.